very warm welcome to everyone, and especially warm welcome to uh, the two folks that we're honouring today, the two SFI St. Patrick's Day uh, medal winners, uh, Margaret and David, and their families. We're delighted uh, to see you here. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, I'd also like to say a very warm welcome to our colleagues from the National Science Foundation. Uh, the director of the National Science Foundation, Dr. Franz Cordova, will be with us uh, uh, in a few moments. Uh, she's actually uh, testifying today in Congress, so we are very uh, pleased that she's been able to take uh, time out of what is a very busy agenda uh, in order to be able to join us uh, later on uh, today. And this is a very, very important um, event for Science Foundation Ireland, where we honour uh, people with a strong connection uh, with Ireland who've had a very distinguished uh, career in the United States and who've also given back uh, massively to Ireland. And if you look back over the previous uh, awardees, um, they're all very, very uh, notable and exceptional individuals. And it's with a little sadness uh, that I can tell you that uh, last year's SFI St. Patrick's Day uh, medal winner uh, in the uh, industrial uh, category unfortunately died just recently, a few days ago, uh, Dr. Pierce Lyons, will actually be buried on St. Patrick's Day, which is uh, rather poignant. Uh, and so we extend our very uh, uh, sincere sympathies uh, to Pierce Lyons' family uh, and friends after what was a very unfortunate uh, uh, death uh, following complications of, of cardiac surgery. Uh, so, with that, uh, let me uh, uh, be more cheery and tell you uh, that uh, this is a part of the Science Foundation Ireland contribution to St. Patrick's Day celebrations in the United States. And I will commence uh, by giving <coughs> a sort of, <coughs> excuse me, a 20 minute um, uh, or so overview of Science Foundation Ireland and, and achievements over the last year. So, if I can have the first of my slides, please. Uh, very good. Thank you very much. So uh, let me begin by uh, uh, saying what does Science Foundation Ireland do? So Science Foundation Ireland uh, basically awards grants. Can we move the slides? Uh, clicker doesn't seem to be. There we go. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, so we make grants to. Uh, OK, no problem. <laughs> No problem, couldn't happen to a better person. There we go. Uh, so we make grants to higher education institutes in Ireland. It's all by competition, uh, so nobody gets money as of right. It's all internationally peer reviewed, so we use no reviewers from Ireland, so there can be no allegation, real or imagined, of cronyism, favoritism, bias, whatever bad word you want to think about. We don't have it. Uh, we use only international folks, and the reason for that is very important. Science is a global endeavor. It's no good only being the best in Ireland. You need to be the best in the world. And obviously, we're very keen on using that uh, to leverage uh, non-Irish exchequer funding, either from industry or from charity or philanthropy. We believe strongly in partnerships, and we believe strongly in collaboration, and we believe strongly in international collaboration. And you'll see some of that with our friends at the National Science Foundation here in the United States. In round numbers, what do you get out of your uh, budget? So we spend about 162.5 million uh, euros every year. From that, we fund about 400 uh, people, 17 world-leading SFI research centres that I'll say something about in, in more detail in a few moments, about 750 active grants, and if you look at the outputs, about 4,500 publications, 1,200 collaborations with industry, almost equally split between multinationals and SMEs, 17 spin-out companies, uh, technologies going through the licensing uh, procedure. We leverage pretty much one-to-one, -one, leveraged 170 million of non-Irish taxpayers' money. That's mostly either uh, money from industry or money from the European Horizon 2020 programs or money from uh, charitable uh, funders. And every primary and every secondary school in Ireland gets a visit from a scientist uh, coordinated by Science Foundation Ireland in order to tell them about important uh, careers in science. So where does that leave us? If you look in citation indices, Ireland is in 11th place in the world. Quite remarkable, we're a small country, only 4.5 million people. Big domains of science that we don't do much in. For example, we don't do much nuclear science. We don't do a lot of polar science and so on. And then if you look in uh, field-specific areas, uh, these are obviously adjusted per capita of the population, we're always in the top uh, six for animal and dairy, immunology, nanotechnology, material science, agriculture, maths, chemistry, and so on. So a good performance in the areas uh, uh, that Ireland uh, is specialized in that it's important for the economy. And if you look at a very hard metric, which is to ask the question of all the publications in Ireland, 
What percentage of them are amongst the top 1%, the top 1% of all cited papers around the world? So you can see the figure for Ireland is 1.59%. If you look at the figure for those people who are funded by Science Foundation Ireland, it's 2.54%. What does that tell you? It tells you that the peer review mechanisms that we use work because there's a disproportionately high citation of those scientists. And that's very comparable to our colleagues in the United States. You'll see in the US is 1.76%, which is close to 1.59. And for our colleagues in the NSF, it's 2.82, quite, quite close to SFI and 2.54. So we're right up there with the big uh, science funding agencies in terms of the percentage of the top 1% of cited uh, publications. But we've done a much more interesting analysis this year, and that is to ask the question, is the rationale for funding basic science from government a good one, or is it some kind of myth? And the rationale is that the public sector invests where the private sector won't because it's cutting edge, it's too high risk, you don't know that it's yet going to be applied. And therefore, if that logic is true, that basic science should be cited as close prior art in patent applications. So we did a formal analysis of all the patent applications in the United States and in Europe to ask the question, what uh, uh, percentage or what Science Foundation Ireland funded and what Irish research was being used by companies. And the highlight of that is about 300 companies are building intellectual property and SFI funded research. About 40% of those create jobs in Ireland and interestingly only 10% of those are IDA clients. So there are a lot of companies outside Ireland using Irish published research to build intellectual property. That's great. I'll show you some more detail about that in a moment. Half of the patent cited publications were funded by us, and something I'm very proud of, 30% of our fundamental basic science program, the investigators program, 30% of those awards, the publications from them are cited in a patent. That's probably best in the world. It tells you that with that fundamental research is being used as a building block by people to build a competitive advantage. And if you look in the United States at a more uh, detailed analysis, 40% of the patents that cite Irish-funded research were filed by U.S. companies, 381 out of 922 patents. That's 115 U.S. companies building intellectual property on Irish government-funded research. And only one in four of those companies has a presence in Ireland. So three out of four of them only operate in the United States. We are delighted about that. We are a very open economy. It's global science. I'm delighted that the science is of such a quality that it's been used by people around the world. And it's an opportunity for our friends and colleagues in the IDA to encourage uh, those companies to think about Ireland if they're expanding into Europe. Um, and also the intellectual property being used in the university and cancer research uh, and other areas. If you look at that in a little more detail, here are the top five US uh, beneficiaries of Irish government funded research, Janssen Pharmaceuticals, Ameren, which is a, a subsidiary of J&J, Facebook on software algorithms, uh, Avedra, which is medical technologies, and Allergan. You can see the medical technologies dominate in quite a lot of that. And you'll see that in that big blue bubble, uh, biotech, university folks, medical technologies, and so on. If you look at this uh, by area, uh, by subject area, you see chemistry, and neurosciences, immunology, molecular biology, uh, networks and communications up at the top, computer sciences. So the kinds of things that you would expect. And I think this is wonderful. It demonstrates a number of things. It demonstrates the global nature of science. It demonstrates the importance of international collaboration. It demonstrates the importance of being best in the world. And it demonstrates that actually funding the fundamental research and then seeing it pushed through the pipeline, either uh, jointly or simply by others and companies, is a very good thing. This is the portfolio of Science Foundation Ireland uh, funded awards. In simple terms, in blue are the investigator-led awards. That's where people propose something, typically a single investigator, often with an international collaboration. And in yellow are the Science Foundation Ireland research centres that are more strategic, where there are a collection of really excellent people who collaborate with industry. And I'm going to say a few things about those Science Foundation Ireland research centres. There are currently 17 of them. We funded five new ones last year. The five new ones are highlighted in the orange here. Uh, Beacon, uh, which is about the circular bioeconomy. Confirm, which is about smart manufacturing and industrial automation. Future Milk, which is about precision agriculture, particularly in the dairy industry. Future Neuro, which is about neurological disorders and iForm, which is about advanced manufacturing. And they join the 12 existing Science Foundation Ireland research centres uh, which are addressing uh, these various topics. So important uh, set of research centres, uh, 17 of them as I've told you, the commitment from the government just under uh, half a billion euros, 434 million. 
the industry commitment 235 million to date, and uh, the European uh, funding won about 300 million. So in steady state, we hope these centres will grow and expand, and we believe that about a third of the money will come through us, Science Foundation Ireland, from the government. About a third will come from industry, and about a third will come from competitively won funding of other uh, sources, typically the European Union. And we are absolutely not, I repeat, not about reducing our contribution. We want to increase our contribution and we want to see those centres grow, but we don't want to do it as a sole funder. We want to partner uh, with others. Uh, they involve, obviously, all of the universities in Ireland, uh, the Tyndall Research Institute, Royal College of Surgeons, and so on. So we mandate that all of the excellent people have to collaborate. They involve 322 companies. You can see almost easily split evenly split between multinationals and SMEs, and a high level of collaboration uh, both uh, within the university sector, with industries, and internationally. And we're delighted that we're partnered with the National Science Foundation Engineering Research Centres, and you're going to hear just a few more words about that later on in the programme uh, from two of those partnerships. This shows you a kind of hard metric of the number of signed legal agreements between industry and the SFI research centres, and the amount of cash actually paid. So in my job, I deal with appropriately sceptical people who never believe uh, uh, you know, in kind contribution. They think that's fluff. They don't really believe legal agreement because you haven't been paid. But being paid and money in the bank, you kind of can't argue with that. Uh, so that's what's uh, down here. These are signed uh, legal agreements, and this is cash actually paid uh, in those industrial collaborations. And there is no sign uh, that this is decreasing. Uh, the slope of the graph uh, is similar. And if you look at the metrics from these research centers, doing well in academic metrics of publications, producing uh, PhD graduates, those people moving to industry. We really want to see about half of the people move to industry as a first destination. We are training people for the private sector, not for an infinite expansion of universities. Um, uh, big collaborations with Europe, uh, money won from companies or Europe, uh, and then spin-outs and, and uh, license agreements down at the bottom. So the centers are performing, and we're pleased with that. You can expand those centres uh, at any time through spoke awards, which allow new industry partners, new academic partners, new uh, uh, products, new uh, collaborations from existing partners uh, to take place. Uh, last year, here are a few of the spoke awards that we made. This is just a sample. On the left-hand side, 14.5 million in a smart cities uh, a spoke award involving three of the SFI research centres, uh, Lero, Adapt and Insight. Uh, and you can see uh, there, uh, Connect also uh, uh, involved in that uh, research centre, looking at uh, smart cities. Artificial intelligence and machine learning for the dairy industry, really interesting. That's an indigenous Irish company, Dairy Master. Uh, they basically make little monitors that hang around the uh, necks of cows. They uh, detect the movement of the cows. They take data every second up into the cloud. On the movement of the cloud of the cow, you can predict whether it's sick. You can predict uh, how well it's ruminating and how much milk yield it will likely have. Then when it goes into an automated milking parlor, the data is taken. And if there's a question about the milk, it diverts the milk into a holding tank so you can can test uh, for infection and not contaminate the whole yield. So Dairy Master, an Irish indigenous company, I always joke, say they're the Facebook for cows. You know, they have data on cows all over the world. So cows in Ireland, cows in New Zealand, cows in America, cows everywhere. It's a fantastic, really interesting application of artificial intelligence and machine learning to something that's fundamentally important for Ireland, which is the dairy industry. And then a couple of partnership awards. Uh, here you see uh, U-Flight. This is about uh, air traffic control for drones. So drones are going to expand massively, uh, whether they're delivering things like Amazon or delivering people or what have you. And the idea that there's going to be no control system for this is just bonkers, because otherwise there will be some problems. So how you architect that, you know, with automated sensing and detecting all the things, really interesting. And then uh, a health project, uh, which is on personalized uh, medicine uh, for hemophilia patients uh, uh, with Shire. So that's just an example of some of the uh, spoken partnership awards. We also make infrastructure awards for equipment. There's a current call out to make sure that the scientific community have the best equipment. Last year, we funded the state-of-the-art um, uh, medical uh, technology. It's, in fact, a medical devices, uh, 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 cardiac catheterization, and uh, implant uh, lab. Normally, the research is done on the back end of a health facility, but one of our SFI research professors, William Wins, is a real expert in first-in-man uh, interventional cardiology, new medical devices, and this is a 
dedicated facility for research for putting in first in man medical devices that when it is not being used for research, which is for very little of the time, will be made available to the health service. So it's kind of the reverse of the normal model. Um, and then we recruit uh, very eminent people from around the world through our SFI research professorship scheme. You can see there are currently nine of these individuals, real stars. Stars matter, star researchers marry, matter. And you can see here uh, Murray Hitchman, who's in the audience, uh, who we've recruited uh, from the United States. He was the associate director uh, for uh, energy and minerals at the US Geological Survey and has just recently uh, relocated to the ICRAG SFI Research Center in University College Dublin. Murray, it's terrific to have you on board. For those of you in the audience and excited about Ireland, look what happened last year. Somebody was here and now they're in Ireland, so that's wonderful. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so we are really interested in star uh, folks uh, from all over the world uh, coming to relocate and do their research in Ireland. Clearly our nearest neighbour, the UK, has decided rather regretfully to exit the European Union. That has uh, implications uh, for Ireland. We have a clear Brexit strategy and that strategy is to strengthen all of our bilateral links with the UK. We're really doing that in an interesting way. There are a few uh, people who are thinking of leaving. If they're excellent, we'd like them to think of coming to Ireland. If they're not excellent, then go somewhere else. Uh, but uh, we're really quite keen to look at that. And then we'd like to widen and deepen our links with other European countries, uh, particularly Germany, uh, which will be a major power in the new Europe. So how are we doing that? So first up with Germany, we opened the first SFI Fraunhofer Research Institute at Dublin City University. I see the president of DCU, Brian McCraw, up there in the back row. Uh, and uh, this partnership is uh, a collaborative between SFI and uh, Fraunhofer and is the first of a number of initiatives jointly with Fraunhofer, including hopefully a joint fund uh, to connect our research uh, with the Fraunhofer uh, research. In terms of strengthening our bilateral relations, we're very keen on that, it's very important. So we do joint research funding with the UK Research Councils, with the Royal Society and with the Wellcome Trust. I noticed Chloe in the audience uh, from RC UK, who runs the Washington office here. You're very welcome and we really want uh, to strengthen all of those relationships. We're doing joint appointments, you'll see some of those announced between the leading universities in the UK, Oxford, Cambridge, Imperial, UCL, and Irish universities, where it makes sense for people to have a 50-50 appointment. And we will soon announce a joint PhD scheme, 120 students registered in Ireland spending half their time co-supervised in the UK, and 120 funded by the UK government spending half their time in Ireland. So 240 people who will experience the best of Irish and uh, British research, going forward at an early point in their career. I think that's very important. Whatever happens with Brexit, it is unlikely to bring down barriers. It's more likely to erect them. So therefore, uh, something like this uh, will help uh, for the future. And that brings me to new things from Science Foundation Ireland. So new things from Science Foundation Ireland. We will fund new PhD students. We have money for a new PhD studentship scheme. This is very important. 500 additional PhD students into the system. Part of that will be the joint PhD scheme with the UK, which I spoke about uh, before. Another uh, uh, facet of that will be Irish students participating in the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council, Centres for Doctoral Training. And then we, Science Foundation Ireland, will run out a new scheme. It's at consultation at the moment, and that will run out next year. And this is going to be a small number of centres, probably about five of them, Again, collaborative with all of the Irish universities in areas that are really important for employment, like artificial intelligence, machine learning, what have you, uh, where we'll fund probably about 100 students a year for five years. So that's five centres, 100 students apiece, that's 500 students per year. And each of the centres will get funding for five years, so they'll have 500 students in total. In areas that are really important to produce for the economy, uh, in uh, strategic areas like IT, we will have a very strong focus on international training. We will send some of those people to the UK, to the United States, uh, to Germany. We want them to have the very best training from the very best people around the world, and we'll appropriately fund that. So that's an exciting new program uh, that's coming on board. Another exciting new thing is challenge-based funding. So we're delighted to be working with the Amer American Chamber of Commerce on this. So this is where you identify a challenge, and then you fund teams from wherever, academia, industry, and so on, to address that challenge. So we're working strongly with Amchan on this. It's a new model of funding, uh, stage gate funding. And it is very, very appropriate and very poignant that we are working with our American colleagues on challenge-based funding. Because in my opinion, the biggest and best scientific challenge ever funded by mankind 
was the United States space program. It was to put a man on the moon. And I want to remind you of President Kennedy's really important moonshot speech at Rice University in 1962. And in that speech, Kennedy said this. He said, we chose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills, the emphasis is mine, because that challenge is one we are willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and which we intend to win, and the others too. And that statement sums up what we want to achieve out of challenge-based funding. We believe that the goal of challenge-based funding will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and abilities, either from academia or from industry or from loan inventors, where creative people can come together to solve a challenge in an interesting way. And so there's great inspiration uh, from uh, that particular thing, and we're delighted to be working with our American colleagues in the American Chamber uh, on uh, this topic. And of course, the government uh, published just recently its uh, national development plan, its capital development plan, its uh, Ireland uh, 2040. It's the plan for the next 10 years from 2018 to 2027. It's got 10 strategic outcomes, which you can see here. Number five is the one where we fit in best, which is to do with uh, enterprise innovation and skills. And in that national development plan is a half uh, a billion fund uh, challenge based for disruptive technologies, which we will be rolling out. 20 SFI research centers, I told you we currently have 17. 500 new PhD students, I told you about that. We're going to upgrade and expand the Tyndall Research Institute. We're going to implement a lot of actions out of our Science Policy Innovation 2020. We're going to strengthen our international collaborations. There's another half billion climate change fund in there to address uh, climate change and make uh, Ireland carbon resilient. And there's a one billion rural development fund also in there, some of which will have uh, research. So right up there in the government's capital uh, development plan is some new stuff uh, for science and innovation. A few closing words about Europe. We are obviously very proud uh, to be members of the uh, European uh, Union uh, and obviously the European programs are very important in terms of research uh, for Ireland. So we encourage people to go to those European programs. A big win this year was the AgriChem Way project that was led uh, by an Irish company, uh, Glambia. And it's essentially about uh, bioeconomy, it's about taking waste product from the milk processing industry, uh, which is whey products that are currently dumped and have a, a landfill problem with them, and converting them in a uh, cost-sustainable way into lactic acid that can then be used in biodegradable plastics, bio-based fertilizers, and human nutrition. That's a 30 million win led by Glambia. Two noticeable, notable things. Number one, it's the best project in Europe in this category. It's the biggest and the best. It was rated number one. And number two, it's the first time that Glambia bid in a significant way into the European programs. So this is our kind of ambition that I told you about before, to get Irish companies, uh, both multinationals in Ireland and indigenous Irish companies and academia to bid for big strategic projects and win. Clearly, the new European framework that will follow on from Horizon 2020, Framework Programme 9, is being developed. There are 12 people in Europe doing that. I'm privileged to be one of those people. Uh, and so the report on that, uh, the so-called LAMI report, which is called Lab Fab App, and that has a very interesting title. It tells you something about the interesting personalities of the people who are on this committee. And it's called Lab Fab App for two reasons. Number one, it tells you what we want to do. Excellent laboratory work. Fab meaning excellent manufacturing and app meaning excellent application. So we want laboratory research, we want to make it, and we want to apply it. And the other reason it's called Lab Fab App is most European Union reports have a very boring title that nobody ever reads. Uh, and so they look at this and think, what the heck is this? And then they look at it. Uh, so that's the important thing. 11 really important things there. I draw your attention to number 10 in this audience. Make international research and innovation cooperation a trademark of EU research and innovation. So just like Ireland, Europe wants to be open to the world, open to uh, colleagues in America for significant collaboration, open to China, open to Japan, open to whatever country uh, for appropriate collaboration. So in closing, uh, these are our kind of uh, top uh, priorities uh, for the coming year. 
to implement the government strategy. I've told you a little bit about that for new PhDs, uh, new SFI research centres, challenge-based funding and disruptive technologies. We want to really build and strengthen our international collaborations, both with science funders, charities, philanthropy and so on. We want to exploit all Brexit opportunities with the UK. Um, uh, we want to attract world-leading uh, researchers to Ireland, like Murray. Anybody who's interested, there's lots of people in the audience, including university presidents and SFI research directors. Uh, we want to invest in new research infrastructure, and we really want uh, the Irish research community to win and lead in Europe. And that's very important. Ireland will be the only native English-speaking country in the European Union uh, after our colleagues in the United Kingdom um, leave. That produces challenges for Ireland, and some of those challenges are to step up to a leadership role and actually lead and win. Those two uh, words are important, uh, those uh, important European projects, and play our part uh, in the future of the European Union. So that's a sort of overview of what's been happening uh, in Ireland, uh, which I hope uh, you find useful.